one of the things we've seen and one of the reasons we're here is that it's very difficult for some of our colleagues to deal with issues of sexual harassment. And I think one of the important fallouts of this hearing is an awareness that it exists. It's, it's so interesting, John, to watch that from all those years ago because how much has changed and how much has not changed it, since then. And that's a moment in history that I think people forget. And we talked to a member of Congress, Pat Schroeder, the other day. But, but the women members of the House walked over to the Senate in 1991. And that's the famous picture right there. They walked over to the Senate, to the Democrats in the Senate, to the members of their own party. And they're saying, you are messing up this Clarence Thomas hearing. You are not listening to Anita Hill and you have to. So does that message resonate again today? The woman that you just heard there was Democratic Congresswoman Anita Lowy in 1991. Her comments came after the testimony of then Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas and Anita Hill, a former Thomas colleague who said that he had sexually harassed her. So joining us now is that Congresswoman Lowy. She played a key role in demanding that the hearing be delayed in order to hear Anita Hill's testimony. Congresswoman, thanks so much. Always a pleasure to be here. with you. Um, it's, what do you think when you look back at that video of you making that um, demand back in 1991? I still think as I look back, the male members of Congress just didn't get it. When we heard that they weren't paying attention to her and giving her adequate opportunity to testify and to really get the background of what happened. We were shocked, and that's when we marched over there. Believe it or not, the senators were in a caucus. Senator Mitchell came out and wouldn't allow us in to talk to the members. Why not? What did they say to you? Oh, well, I don't know. They didn't feel that we belonged at the caucus meeting. So the whole incident was shocking. And today, however, it's a little different. Is it? It's a little different. However, I do believe that the senators have an obligation to deal with character and credibility. And I don't think that her request to have an FBI background check is improper. Certainly, it took guts for Dr. Ford to come out with this and testify. Remember, this is a lifetime appointment. We're going to have this judge, as we now have Clarence Thomas, for a lifetime. Understood, but I think you know that President Trump is never going to agree to that. He's the one who has to give the directive of whether or not the FBI would reopen the background check. That's not going to happen. That's a non-starter. Well, it's unfortunate that this is not a requirement, because if you have a situation where Judge Kavanaugh says, I didn't do it, and you have Dr. Ford and took a lot of guts for her to get out there, uh, then I think you need a third party, the FBI, to really validate their statements. You said back in 1991, the <clears throat> male senators didn't get it. A lot's changed since 1991. Do you think they get it today? We'll have to see. We'll have to see whether they get it or not. What I'm would sure reveal some would you? get it and some don't but, get but it. But what, I mean, from what you've seen thus far, what <clears throat> would be the evidence that they get it? They understand how sexual assault allegations come forward. They understand the sensitivity of all of this. Whether they get it or not will determine whether they allow Dr. Ford to speak and whether they will do an FBI check. Look, this is a lifetime appointment. You don't want to just rush this through. Well, now they say they're going to deal with this on Monday, and it cannot be rushed through, in my judgment, because if I were voting, I'm not voting at the Senate. At this point, I would have to vote no. But what's the proper amount of time? Obviously, Republicans want to get Brett Kavanaugh seated. Obviously, Democrats don't. So what's the proper amount of time to allow her to tell her story? The proper amount of time is to have the FBI do a background and allow her to tell the story. Because if you have a situation where some believe her, some don't believe her, and some don't want to believe her, then I think you need the third party to validate. I understand, but it sounds like that's not going to happen. So given that the FBI is out of the equation, because President Trump does not want to have them reopen the background check. As he has said, that Brett Kavanaugh, he said, has been subject to something like six background checks. Surely something like this would have come out. But, you know, look, the FBI doesn't ever really investigate things where there's no police report. This is not a federal crime. So let's take that off the table. So that's the FBI is gone. Should she testify 
to the Senate Judiciary Committee on Monday? If the Senate Judiciary Committee is determined by a bipartisan, real listening of her, perhaps she should. But if a group of senators have made their mind up that they're not going to believe her, then you need a third party to validate what she's saying and what he's saying. He says, no, I didn't do it. She says, yes, he did. And frankly, as a woman, it takes a lot of guts to come out publicly and discuss this incident. And that's what she's calling for. So what she's calling for is let's hear from some of the other people who were there. So she says, I think that there were something like six people at this party, and she would like them to take the time to investigate and talk to the other people and what their memories are of the party. Chuck Grassley has said, no, there will only be these two witnesses, Brett Kavanaugh and Dr. Ford. So if she has 24 hours to decide, I mean, what, you know, you were instrumental in helping figure out how Anita Hill should do this. What is your advice to Christine Blasey Ford today? I don't understand how Dr. Ford can testify without other witnesses corroborating. Because as you look at this, as you just said, you have the senator saying, testify Monday, that's it. And she has enormous pressure to come testify. If they've already made up their mind they're not going to believe her, then you need someone else, either, as you said, other people who were there or the FBI. There are other ways to corroborate. Again, I'd like to say this is a lifetime appointment. And it's absolutely essential that we understand the character of this man, the issues, uh, what he stands for and what he's opposed to. But if Chuck Grassley won't let any other witness, do you think she should not show up on Monday? I think she's going to have to make this very tough decision because if they're already determined not to believe her, then she needs other people to corroborate what she is talking about, it took such guts to come out publicly. I, I can't imagine what it took before. And according to her, and according to her testimony to many others privately, um, this was so disturbing to her. And of course, I can't imagine it. I can't imagine it. So for somebody, for a senator to vote for a judge who denies this action, and yet doesn't feel other people should corroborate either what he's saying or what she's saying, I think is absolutely wrong. Arsene Nidaloi, we thank you for being here. Thank you. We'll see what happens. A pleasure to be with you. Thank you.